Hello everyone, this is Jesse Bowen, Grandmaster Jesse Bowen. I just wanted to share some words of wisdom and some thoughts today as I kick off my day. Uh, I am the author of God Gives Me Vision. Today I wanted to share with you uh, from my book uh, just a couple things. And one of them is God redirected my path and developing spiritual vision. What, did that, what does that really mean? Well, you have probably experienced it, is that you were maybe not heading in life where you should be going and something happens and that something is, uh, it can be good and sometimes it can even be bad, that changes your life. You have this life-changing experience. And that experience is what keeps you from uh, doing something bad or what I call wasting a perfectly good life. I know for me, it was uh, when I was around the age of 18, I had an experience that forced me to leave my home and actually move to Raleigh, North Carolina. That was a changing point of my life. And I look back at that particular situation, and it wasn't a good situation, uh, where would my life be if that moment had not have happened? It was perceived at that particular time as something bad, but as I realized, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. This is what I call God replacing you. When you realize that you have a purpose, because God knows your purpose, and he redirects you, now, as a human being, you have the choice of the freedom to reject that feeling or you can go with the flow. So when you decide to reject it, you can override any decision. If you have a decision that uh, is a life-changing moment, you, if you do it, you're going to have an outcome. If you don't do it, you're going to have an outcome. And that's in good and bad situations. So you have to realize as you look back at your life, what life-changing experiences did you get? Was it the ending of a relationship? And if you'd stayed there, where would that relationship be today? Now look at your life now. Should you have stayed? Should you have gone? What did you do with that decision? Right now you're listening to my video. You have the choice to stop listening to it or to continue. So when you realize that something happens in your life today and you have a plan and that plan is altered or is changed, then you have that decision. Maybe it's something that you believe you should do and maybe you decide to override that decision and not do it. Maybe there are other people influencing you telling you shouldn't do something and you override that. and. You know, then you regret it. You know, as I go back and revisit my successes and challenges in life, and you know, there was a situation where uh, there was an organization, uh, North Carolina Amateur Sports, and uh, starting the martial arts, and so many martial artists because you know, karate folks, they didn't want to be associated with the Taekwondo folks. This is how it is in life. Maybe it's racial. You don't want to be associated with a certain group of people but you believe in your heart that that's the right thing to do. So I became the organizer for North Carolina Amateur Sports and I went on to be the coordinator for the Olympic Committee uh, for Taekwondo. I wound up coaching Duke's Taekwondo team, leading it to the first gold medal. I was on staff at Duke University for 27 years uh, before retiring, retiring a few years ago. But what if I hadn't taken that position because by becoming the organizer and doing a great job, then all of those doors opened for me. Now, what if I had made that decision to not to do that? What if I had said, you're right, you know, I'm not going to be helping the Taekwondo folks. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be having those types of experiences that I had. I wouldn't have had that opportunity. I would have never been on the staff at Duke University. I would have never been affiliated with the Olympic Committee. I would have never had those opportunities. So the question is, when you find something for good, 
or you have a chance to be a builder, no matter what that experience may be. Sometimes you really have to override the people that are closest to you because when God puts you in a place to be a receiver, so it's not about the blessings, it's about your ability to be able to receive those blessings. So when we begin to think about that and we think about that God redirects my path. So look at your life, take that moment. And so we're gonna talk about developing spiritual vision. Uh, spiritual vision is something you already have. You have an idea, you have a concept. Scientists say that we have anywhere from, you know, 50 to 70,000 thoughts that happen a day. That's a lot of thinking. So the question is, what are you thinking? So I'm going to share, uh, as I close today, I want to share with you five ways to sharpen your spiritual vision. Well, as a child, you probably have been taught to pray. And if you grew up in my era, you closed your eyes and you began to pray. If you didn't pray, you still kept your eyes closed. So the very first thing about sharpening your vision, so we're not talking about what we see, we're talking about what we see within us. What are the things that you see within your own head? We're talking about those visions. So what are you thinking? You know, I'm an author, I'm the president of a publishing company, and when I'm working with an, an author, I'm trying to get them to be creative. What do they see in their head? How are they gonna write the story? And this is the thing about martial arts, the powerful tool is when we're doing kata, it's teaching us about our mental visualization to be able to defend ourselves against an imaginary person. So when you're going through life and you want to see yourself succeeding, then you may have to imagine yourself succeeding. So we start by closing our eyes. You see, because when we close our eyes, our mind automatically goes to a meditative state. You would not even be able to sleep at night unless you went to a meditative state. The monkey mind, this is all your thoughts jumping around and all of those things happening. You're not able to sleep. You probably, you know, go get a sleeping pill or do something that, feel, that you feel that calms you down so you can go to sleep. So the first thing about developing spirituality is learning to close your eyes. You know, be involved in a mindfulness course or mindfulness lessons. You know, this is a great way for you to learn how to be able to control. Because when you can control your mind, you can control your thinking, and then you can control your action. So when you close your eyes, you begin to drift into a state of relaxation. And so, you know, you have all these different levels of mind brain frequency, the alpha level, the beta level, the delta, the theta level, all these different levels of mind really means how relaxed you are. And when you now become relaxed, you can now become clear in your mind of what you're seeing. So when you close your eyes, and visualize, you know, a project. Visualize your day. How? What are you going to be doing that day? When you make your to-do list, visualize your to-do list. See yourself, you know, doing the things that you're needing to do. And of course, when you're visualizing, see yourself succeeding. See yourself achieving. So when you begin to pray, and you're saying your basic prayer then close your eyes and allow yourself to become emotional to what you see. These are the natural things that you do every day. Number two, ask God for wisdom. So when you're asking a friend and that friend tells you what they think, then you may decide to use that or not. But when you now become spiritually collected, this is that number one, when you close your eyes, Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, give me a vision. Lord, give me a sign. Lord, 
bring that information to me. I don't know. I need you, Lord. I need your help. And when you ask and you believe that that answer is coming to you, you see, it goes all the way back to your belief system. What do you believe? What do you think? Because that becomes a part of your reality. When you can change your thinking and you can change your belief, you can then change your outcome. It doesn't matter where you grew up, who your parents are. It doesn't matter. It All that matters is what happens inside of you. And at the end of the day, it becomes about your spiritual, your spiritual connection to God. It becomes about that. You're on a journey. You're born and you die. And everything in between is a journey. And what is it? What do you do with this perfectly good life? What do you do? What did you, what purpose? What did you create? You know, the Wright brothers had a purpose, you know, coming up with the airplane. These guys were bicycle shop, prepare people. They came up with, and the, the concept of the airplane, Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King. What if these people had not been born? Would we have what we have today? Well, there's a possibility we don't know, but we do know what did actually happen. So when you ask God and you sit and meditate and you ask God, then that's what you want. That's what you, that's where you start. You want to have a spiritual connection. It, you know, it, you have to have that. You are a spiritual being. It's already there. That is the natural thing for you to do. Number three, look for signposts in the word. Pick up your Bible and read. And what you can do, sometimes I'll be thinking about something, Lord, I need the answer. And I'll just take my hand and open the Bible up and see where does it open. I'll be listening to my radio and someone may say to me, may say something that connects with what I'm asking God for or that direction I'm asking God for. I may be riding down the road and I see it on a dance on a billboard, you know, because I'm looking and when I'm looking, my mind, my brain is seeking that information and I have this deep faith that that information is going to come. So I may hear it from my radio, I may see it on a billboard, I may just pick up the Bible, open it up. Someone may come to me and they will say something to me and within what they say to me, it, the answer is within that. You know, the book, this book was actually written because in one week I had about 15 people to say to me, Jesse, you have great vision, you have great vision. And then I woke up one morning and God had spoken to me and he said, write the book and release it on your birthday. I'm going, really, God? Really? But I'm obedient. I am very obedient. So when God speaks to me and says, do something, you know, this recording this that I'm doing right now, I was debating, should I do it or should I not do it? And God spoke to me and says, do it. So guess what? I'm actually doing it. So when you now hear that inner voice, it may be coming through your dreams, it may be coming from someone else that's speaking something, then you have to pay attention to what it is that you actually hear. So remember when you, you know when you're reading the scriptures, when you so you say, well, I don't understand what 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 that what the meaning of that. Then find a spiritual leader, your pastor. Uh, rabbi, your minister, find someone to help you to be able to understand what you're reading. But start reading. Uh, number four, keep your spiritual antennas up. You know, when I'm working on a project and my, and I say, Lord, I don't know, I don't know how to do this, Lord. I don't know how to do this. Then I begin to watch what happens during that day. I'll probably meet someone online or be directed to someone or be searching. And that information just comes up because this is the power of God. If you, if you ask then, and you are a believer, then you are, you are a receiver. So when you ask for this information, then this information comes to you. 
So you want to keep yourself open to be a receiver. Remember the promises of God, of, of your life is already there. All you have to do is learn to become a receiver. Turn away from the things that are not bringing a benefit to your life, that's not making a difference in your life. And my number five, discuss what you are assessing. In other words, you want to join a group. And that's why we set up this martial arts group. So you'll have a place to ask questions and to be able to get answers because the, this particular posting on our Facebook is really about Christian authors. We have martial artists that are ministers, that are writers, and they have studied the word. They have created a relationship with God. And so if you don't have a spiritual person that you can uh, talk to, then it's okay. You can inbox us here and I'll reach out personally to you. Or, you know, we have you know, Dr. Keith Yates and many other martial artists that are Christians that we have a relationship and we want to share the relationship and the abundance in which that relationship will prosper you in your life. So the things that I've covered today in my five ways to sharpen your spiritual vision, number one, close your eyes and pray. You can close your eyes and pray or close your eyes, ask the question and visualize the answer you want to have in your life. Number two, ask God for wisdom. Confession is the very first rule. Confession is about, you know, I don't know. And hey, I do it all the time. Lord, I have no idea on how to be able to do this. You know, I, I believe in my heart you have directed me this way and I need help. And, you know, within a few days and sometimes within a few minutes, then God has come back and he's actually answered that. Number three, remember, look for the signposts in the word. So remember, get a Bible, search online. That's the easy way to do that. You can say, well, what does the Bible say about goal setting? What does the it says write it, you know, you know. So what is it? So that's what I'm saying is everything you need is right there. And uh, it, uh, here's a scripture for you: Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. That's Jeremiah 33 and 3. So it's already been there. So the Bible, the greatest book in the world, already has this information for you. Okay, number four, keep your spiritual antennas up. When you ask, have expectation. Have expectation. And then when, you, when it comes, you will be able to recognize it because you, you have faith. Faith is a belief, a desire, and expectation that it's going to happen. Remember number five, discuss what you're sensing. So spirituality, if you're new to uh, a Christian life and you're having uh, 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 these feelings and of what is, what does it mean to be a spirit, spiritual person? How does it feel? So remember, okay, message us, ask us questions. We're here to serve you and help you on your journey, not only to teach you about karate or taekwondo or any other martial arts, we're also here as leaders to help you to develop and be the great person you can be. Hey everyone, this is Grandmaster Jesse Bowens. Be blessed. Don't forget check out my book. It's on Amazon, or you can go to my website, coachjessebowen.com. Be blessed.